I am Thomas Varses, I would like to talk about Kangal, my favorite breed that I like very much. I am a big lover of this dog breed, I met them for the first time 12 years ago. I think I can say to Hungary one of my very good friends, Zoltan Tarnoxi, the owner of the Jilal Ad Din Kennel brought one of the first dogs. I can say that they became my love at first sight. In fact, I acquired my first Kangal very soon after, and soon after my first trip to Turkey. And I can say that our first 12 years were practically in the name of Kangal. In fact, the last two years when we just keep our existing flock and did not bring any litters, we have finished breeding. The reason for this is that I think and this is my personal experience, or intuition, that I see that this dog breed has become fashionable. Unfortunately, it's starting to become more and more fashionable, I don't think that they are suitable for everyone, I don't want to assist in a in quotes dog factory to get the breed I love to go in a direction that's not comfortable for me. Unfortunately the tendency is that what is fashion is always diluted, and I don't really want to or don't want to be a part of it. I think it will not be good for Kangal, who has been temporarily registered by the FCI, to be taken to an exhibition according to the rules set by the FCI. Many times it is to find that in a 5 times 5 meter lap, say 10 male are let up and can be let up. It's a bit of a strange to me, I had the Karakan Club does a great job of making a conscientious effort to register every dog. The breed shows are very good, I mainly talk about foreign shows where I saw them, I am talking specifically about the Netherlands where the Kangal males were happily side by side at the Europe show. It was weird to me being that my dogs were well managed, basically the breed was well managed, simply landscape unfamiliar to them the environment, or so to speak. You have to look at an exhibition in Turkey, where Kangals are set up facet o face, for which you might be excluded at an FCI show. I see a lot of people who want Kangal in their backyards of a townhouse on 10 square meters. When I am called upon when there is a Kangal litter, how big the parents are, and how aggressive they are, I think this has become the trend. It has become an expectation for a dog to be as big as possible, the more aggressive it is, because there is such a false view of this breed that it is a huge attack dog. This is not the case. So the dimensions and properties of the dry predispose to the same as either a large-bodied Commodore or even a Cuvass. Obviously the Malakli is a bigger, whining dog, but basically the Kangal has nothing mystical about it, basically a dog with normal dimensions, normally behaving in traits. And it went a little in the wrong direction, if a dog isn't one and a half meter high like in YouTube videos, the authenticity of which is accepted by someone, or not that dog is no longer big and not Kangal. Let's talk about the breed itself that I really love, and I tried to dig myself in their past and history as much as possible, and I tried to translate this into my everyday life. A breed with a history of thousands of years, I can say for sure, and despite everything that is happening in the world today, the dog can still be used raw for what it was bred practically a thousand years ago. Let's take Kangal as a basis, I think here we should mention the fact that Malakli and Kangal always go together somewhere. In the case of the Turks, two separate breeds, basically the guarding and protection of a flock of sheep. The Malakli is more of a guard dog, a more robust mastiff type, and I would put them aside with that. On the other hand, about Kangal, we can say that to this day they are perfectly suited for their ancient roles, they are real shepherd dogs and very very well suited for this aim. You don't have to change them, you just have to give them the conditions, provided with the conditions to be able to do what you have, love and know. Considering the specifics of our area, our 19 acres of fish ponds, forests, meadows here, all things can happen to our dogs that happened to them and he passed. I am thinking here of the attacks of jackal packs, wild boars and the attack of other stray dogs, the peculiarities of the weather, winter is really winter, summer is really summer. And we have sheep to be guarded, which we keep specifically for the Kangals. They are used to socializing with sheep and other animals at a young age. Obviously domesticated or domesticated sheep are attacked by jackals, or wild boars, who come for eating the sheep food. 
All situations should be solved by the Kangals, and I have to say they are solved. I believe and confess that in all the circumstances they encounter here, I have tried to draw the consequence by taking into account already during the breeding which individuals reacted possibly well, which might tend to stray or hunt. I measured my selected flock very narrowly and rigorously, which was appropriate and always ensured safety for me and my animals. I have to note that otherwise, given the peculiarities of today's world, so human intruders have also occurred over the years, there was no problem anyway, Kangals were effective in these situations as well. They always stand their ground completely, I didn't have to worry that I might have taken my dog to a dog school incorrectly and at the right time, or they might not be able to respond effectively and in time. I didn't want to offend anyone who carries their dog to dog school, Kangals are raw dogs, I keep them raw, it's that kind of breed. I dare to say very, very proudly that I think our dogs are practically well socialized and with all the circumstances that came to us and I didn't expect it, they were always ready to solve the problem and they solved it. My personal opinion on to whom the Kangal is ideal and to whom they are not ideal are as follows. I think whoever thinks in a responsible way will not take Kangal as a first dog. I wouldn't recommend them for first-time dog owners, but I can say that anyone with former dog experience will thrive very easily with the Kangal breed. The Kangal is very aware of himself, have a very strong personality, and if not properly socialized, they will desit it had they want to be the pack leaders. It may not be compatible with all the things we are accustomed to in our civilized society, but I think whoever has the right area, and I'm saying here is at least a 1,000 square meter family garden or territory. You can keep the place quietly fenced so that the dog can't stray and keep them calm with other breeds as the Kangal has always been kept in groups in smaller, larger flocks. I wouldn't recommend recommend the breed for those who saw them on YouTube and think that they will be a big and easy temperament dog or want one because they are fashionable, I wouldn't recommend it in any way. Such coexistence will soon lead to tensions between the dog and the owner. I also not recommend to keep them in small apartments or in small backyards. They are a free breed, they cannot stand to spend their life in, let's say, 20 square meters. And why do I say why I don't recommend keeping it in a small family house or maybe an apartment? Think about their history, or to Turkey to this day an average shepherd was wandering on a pasture of 30, 50 or 150 square kilometers, they come and go, following and paratecting the herd in cold winter to hot summer. Simple things are coded in the breed, like the need to move, the need for freedom, the need for constant work, simply if they are not occupied with work, they start to get bored, which will always lead to behavioral problems. Taking into account the peculiarities of how a shepherd keeps the candles in Turkey, they are not fed well and regularly, in spite of that, even with these conditions they can weigh 70 kilograms. Don't be surprised that under civilized conditions at home, feeding your dog every day they will grow for 100 kilograms or more. It is very important that the Kangal, as they were kept in a herd should sooner or later catch up with the herd leader. The owner should always always behave like a herd leader and should show the dog their place in the hierarchy, this is the reason why I do not recommend them for first dog owners. I want to talk a little about the beliefs I smile many times on YouTube or different channels that Kangal alone kills a bear and whatever it is is practically the terminator of dogs. By the way, this is true for quite a few breeds, each of which is a terminator of its kind, but speaking of the realities, so in Turkey, the Kangals are a Turkish shepherd dogs and the average shepherd keep an average 20 Kangals. A Turkish wolf an average weights 40 kilograms and a wild wolf of this size can be handled by Kangals in general. We took a lot of dogs to Transylvania and to the sheep farms there to replace the shepherd dogs there. What was a real surprise for us that the European grey wolves living in the Carpathians weighed an average 80 kilograms, much stronger than their Turkish relatives. In many cases much stronger than the dogs. Due to their genetics and due to the instincts of the Kangal, they used to go for the wolf alone. Well the fight did not always ended with the victory of the Kangal, and has led to very big losses among the dogs we transported and unfortunately a good few individuals had to be replaced. Later, the dogs simply got used to the fact that Carpathian wolves are much bigger and stronger, which certainly involved many sacrifices on the part of the dogs. Also, I would like to dispel the misconception that the Kangals are one and a half meters high, if we look at the YouTube videos for a bit, 
we can discover a scam there if we look closely. Especially if there are more than one person in the report then you will immediately see that the dog is always caught by the lowest person, standing below or farther away, on a stretched leash. Obviously once again I say there are extreme sized dogs with a height of 100 centimeters at the withers, but this is not common. I ask everyone who holds this breed, if you've taken the trouble to buy one, train yourself. If you as an owner pay attention to everything, it will be a lot of joy, and many happy moments together. Living on a lake shore, there are a lot of mosquitoes and a lot of ticks, obviously we always do our best to make our animals and their environment more protected. In this respect, in terms of diseases, the Kangal is a very resistant breed. Due to the facts that we feed our dogs well, attention and proper vaccinations, thank God I have not yet experienced any diseases typical of most so-called civilized breeds. And here I can talk about completely normal things, whether it's a bowel twist, or I can talk about parvo, although all breeds need vaccinations. Although many breeds is characterized by such civilized overcultivated diseases, Kangals in general are free from them. With their young, they raise them independently, they select the most lifelike puppies from the litter, so they do not bring big litters. As a closing, I would like to advise or ask everyone who is thinking on to buy this breed, do not decide because they are fashionable. A responsible breeder will definitely help you find out which puppy to choose. Go and see the parent dogs personally before decision. An old saying is that only the eagles breed eagles, so the Kangal should remain the Kangal in every way. This is what everyone should do.